Good evening, Marilyn, Magdiel, Jose, Elizabeth. Miss Carla is here too. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, how are you? A little tired, but I'm good. Yeah, okay, a busy Monday? Yes, Mondays are usually busy and tired, but okay, it is. In a couple Hello, of hours, teacher. you will be able to rest. Good night. How are you doing, Magdiel? I'm great. What about yourself, teacher? What do you feel? Um, are I'm, you better? Uh, yes, I think I'm better. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> my continue is very, very red. <laughs> And but yes, I'm um, going do you rest, to do your rest and your weekend. Yes, um, yes, I did. But anyways, I think I'll I look for a different opinion next. Probably Wednesday, I'll visit another doctor. So yes, but I'm feeling good. Thank you for asking. Okay, teacher. I I was trying the exercise in platform but I, I can't complete. Oh, you couldn't. And did you try with the answers I sent? Yes. Um, did it work? No, teacher. No. Oh. Is it, uh, I'm sure it's complete or only to work. Can you provide me with the exercise number? Number one. It's uh, the midterm exam. Is that the midterm exam? Not the chair. It's uh, homework 2.11. 2.11. Yes, those are the ones that I sent. Uh, mm, please try... Um, Delete the answers and refresh. I think Ale is having the same issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Delete going, the answers. Are you uh, going to try? Hmm? I'm going to try with the, try with the and answer okay. or the answer. Mm -hmm. Try, delete the answers. Hay que borrarlas. Luego dele refresh a la plataforma y luego copie y pegue um, como las mandé en el chat. Tal vez funcione. Teacher. Yes. Eh, yo eso lo estuve haciendo estos días atrás ¿Mm? y de ninguna manera las agarró la plataforma. Yo oh. la mandé captura de pantalla en el chat uh -huh. y, o sea, Realmente están bien, pero la plataforma las agarra como malas. Y yo estoy haciendo eso que usted dice de refrescar y volverlas a poner, pero igual las deja malas. Creo que igual con Don Mario estuvimos haciendo eso ayer porque yo le pedí ayuda a él porque pensé que yo las estaba poniendo mal, pero realmente la plataforma no las agarra. Ok. Ok, um, so, en... You said that you were trying yesterday. Estuvo tratando ayer, ¿verdad? Sí. Okay. Y ahora, luego usted las mandó en el chat. Uh -huh. Le di otra vez borrar, refrescar. Las copié de su chat y las volví a pegar. Y me las agarró malas otra vez. Ok. Uh, déjenme saber si, si, si les... Porque si ya tiene días así, entonces debe de ser la plataforma. Algo uh -huh. a estar mal. Entonces, si sigue así mañana o no les funciona, eh, me dejan saber para escribirle a los niños de soporte técnico. Tal vez sea la plataforma en sí que está fallando, porque si sí, ese ejercicio lo hicimos en clase y, y está, uh -huh. bueno, a mí me las tira todas correctas. Entonces, sí, yo, yo no sé si don Mario no se ha conectado o si no estará acá, pero... Eh, de ahí en, ya en bien noche lo estábamos intentando juntos, vea, él en, en su teléfono y en el mío, y igual a él creo que tampoco se las agarró. Mm. 
que ha intentado desde la computadora, porque a veces sí sucede también. No, de la computadora no, solo le echo en el celular. Trate mañana en la computadora porque a veces sucede que no les agarran las respuestas en el celular. Ya se nos ha dado el caso también que intentando en la, en la computadora sí, sí les funcionan las respuestas. No, no conozco el motivo, pero sí, eh, sí sucede a veces. Entonces trate desde la computadora y si no les funciona me avisa para yo contactar a los niños de soporte técnico y, y tal vez nos pueden ayudar. Vale. Eh, Matías le funcionó o todavía There. no. Ajá. Yes. Yes. yes, teacher. I copied them. Um, and paste. Similar. Uh, that. Yes, number two, one and two. Okay. Um, uh, did that okay? Excellent. So, yes, trate a Alejandra mañana desde la computadora porque así a Matías le funcionó. Eh, Mario creo que no se ha conectado aún, pero ajá, le vamos a hacer la misma sugerencia. Ok, ¿anybody else having issues with the exercises? Nobody else? Me teacher, but I will try tomorrow too. Oh, same exercise. Yeah, the same exercise. And you were trying from... Um, from your cell phone? No, not from my cell phone, from the computer, but I will try it on the cell phone later. Okay, uh, try again in the computer. Um, delete, refresh, copy, paste, and if it doesn't work, try from your phone. If it doesn't work, let me know. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so let's continue working with the vocabulary. Uh, last Friday, we worked on this listening, um, but we didn't discuss the questions. Okay, so we did the part A, but we couldn't finish the part B. Uh, it was uh, Jane and Kyle talking about a uh, situation that Irks them, and then um, we didn't do the part B, so we have to discuss who do you think was more annoying, James or Kyle, um, talking about the situation. Do you think, um, who do you think handled the situation better, Jane or Kyle? And how would you have reacted in each situation? I'm going to play the recording one more time so you can refresh. Um, the listening part and remember what was it about. Page 80. Exercise 2. It really irks me. Part B. Listen again. Discuss the questions. 1. Jane. Hi, Jane. Say, are you okay? You're looking a bit tired. Oh, I am. It's my neighbors. Oh, so they're acting up again, huh? Yep, unfortunately they are. What is it this time? Loud music again? Well, not exactly. You've been to my apartment, right? Yeah, I've been there once. It's a nice place. Well, thank you. So you remember I live on the top floor, right? Well, last night, around midnight, my neighbors decided to go up on the roof. The roof? What for? Apparently they had this guy in from out of town, and they wanted to show him the view. Can you believe it? I'm fast asleep, and all of a sudden I hear, stomp, stomp, stomp. They're walking around on the roof. It sounded like my ceiling was going to fall in. So what did you do? Well, after about 15 minutes, I got dressed and went up there and asked them to be quiet. I was so mad. But they said they were sorry and that they hadn't realized I'd been able to hear them. I told them it was okay. But then, of course, after that, I couldn't go back to sleep. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? 
You can't fall asleep, and then before you know it, it's morning and the alarm clock is going off. 2. Kyle Hey, Kyle. So, how was the movie? Well, I didn't really enjoy it very much. Why? That film got great reviews. It's really popular. Oh, the movie was fine. I just got irritated by the people sitting in front of me. What happened? Well, first, they came in late. It took them a while to get into their seats. All this was happening right during an exciting part of the movie. And then, they started talking. Oh, I hate when that happens. There were two of them, a man and a woman. The man had seen the movie before. And get this, he was telling the woman the entire story. Like they were the only two people in the theater. Did you do anything about it? Well, no, but another person asked them to be quiet. Did that work? No, they just started arguing. Their voices were getting louder and louder. One guy was saying, you shouldn't talk during the movie. And the other guy was saying, I paid my money and you can't tell me what to do. So what finally happened? Well, I went and found the usher because it was getting out of hand. Everyone quieted down eventually, but it was too late. They had already ruined the movie for me. All right, there was the audio. So whose situation do you think was more annoying? James or Kyle's? What's your opinion? I think, I think the both person teacher. Both situation. Yes. Okay. Um. Uh, yes, both are annoying, and it is kind of difficult to say which one is more annoying, right? For me, it's saying both are really annoying. Uh, but um, maybe the worst, um, it would be James, uh, because what well, she needed to sleep. And next day, she had to go to work. Mm -hmm. Kyle is, is in the, the cinema, no, in the theater. Yes, it's at the movie theater. Uh huh. Oh. Okay, that's right. Uh, yes, it's the it's same. It's really annoying because, yes, if you go to the movies, you are expecting to have a good time. You pay for the for the ticket and you want to see the movie and then somebody ruined it completely. <laughs> so yes, both are annoying, but I think that the worst is um Jane's situation. But yeah, thank you so much for your participation and your opinion. Now, uh who do you think handled the situation better? Jane or Kyle? Kyle. Kyle. Mm -hmm. Why? Because um, I felt that He's, he was angry. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say anything. Uh huh. He didn't say anything and he wait. And then um, when he was calm enough, he reached the usher. Yes. Um, you know, usher, I read it in the chat. Ajá. The usher es el, el, la persona en el cine que está a cargo de acomodar a los a los visitantes, a los, um, a, no sé cómo le dirán aquí, pero son los que están en entrada de, de la, 
de la sala, que le piden su ticket, que le dicen a dónde está su asiento, que le ayudan a la gente a acomodarse. Esas personas, eh, la, la ocupación esa es llamada usher en inglés. Uh -huh. Entonces, uh, según el, el listening, Kyle le fue a decir al usher de la situación que estaba pasando para que él, él interviniera. So, so, yes. And he waited until he was gone. So, yes. Okay. So, thank you so much. I, I agree with you. I think that uh, Kyle uh, handled the situation better. I think that Jane... You should have called the police. Mm -hmm. He, uh, she shouldn't have get involved and and reach out uh, the neighbors directly. So yes, she should have called the police instead of facing them herself. But yes, now number three, how would you have reached in reacted in each situation? How would you have reacted in each situation? Well, probably I will I will try to look for some people in charge to the to the, to the movie in order to to put those guys come be quiet. Uh huh. Okay. And about um, Jane's situation, what would you have done? Yes. Uh, um, sorry, I had to take a call right now. Oh, no problem. Anybody else? Well, yes, I think that for both situations, in both uh, situations, I will have reached um, an authority. And um, for the movie theater, yes, I would have reached the usher as well. And uh, in case of a neighbors, I would have called the police. What about you? No opinions. Okay. Uh, for the next exercise, we have a, uh, um, let me see if this is, yes, we need to complete the sentences here with our own opinion. As you can see here, the first one is already done as an example. Uh, let me make this bigger so that we can be better. Okay, let us complete with our own opinions and then we're going to share in breakout rooms. Situation number one, it says, one thing that irks me about my neighbors is, for example, when they park too close to my car. Uh, number two, something that bothers me about my friends is, you complete it. If I'm riding in a car, something that irritates me is, the thing that aggravates the most is a friend, and you continue. The thing that annoys me about people talking on the cell phone is, and finally, you name the thing, and then it's one thing that bothers me al at home. Is the exercise clear? Any question about the exercise or the vocabulary? 
No, teacher. No? Okay. So I'll give you time and then we're going to check your answer. Write down your ideas, you can use your notebook. And then we're going to discuss in the breakup rooms so that you can practice your speaking.
Okay, it's time to go to the breakup rooms. So we're going to go ahead and share what we have and what bothers, um, heritates, and what you have written. So let me create the breakout rooms. One moment. Okay, there you go. Let us go ahead and practice speaking. Uh, if you want, I start. Um, well, okay. Um, uh, we need the uh, one thing that irks my irks my about my neighbors. My neighbors is when people park in front of my house. Something that bothers me about my friend is when they didn't complete their part of the homework. If I am reading in a car, something that irritates me is when people don't respect the stop sign. The thing that uh, aggravates my most is friend doesn't arrive in the time we agreed upon. The thing that annoys me about people talking on cell phone is when they talk too loudly. When I am the when I am when I am in a meeting, and my mother or father talks to me, is one thing that bothers me at home. Great! Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Mm, good job, Alexander. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, for me, uh, one thing that irks me about my nervous is the same as Alexander. When people park in front of my door house. Mm -hmm. The second one is uh, something that bothers me about, about my friend is uh, they never have the time for for a meeting. They, I don't know, maybe they're like turtles. They only like to living inside the shell. I hate that. Uh, the third thing is, uh, if I'm riding in a car, something that irritates me is the crazy motorcycles in all around the street. Mm -hmm. uh, fourth, the thing that aggravates me most is at a friend where does he never carry his own money he always want 
to someone he invites him to eat or to go to a movie he never he never had money in her pocket uh the fact the thing that annoys me about people talking on cell phone is when people practically screaming when they receive calls and mm. My lovely neighbors is one thing that bothers me at home. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, Alexander. Also, I have two Alexander here, MX Alexander and Manuel Alexander. The both of you, excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. So in a, well, the first one is a similar, right? It's um, uh, something that hurts about your neighbors is when they park in front of your house. So yes, it, it it's the same for me. Anybody else here in the group? Any other volunteer to share? Nobody? Okay, uh, thank you so much, Emerson and Manuel for sharing. Uh, do you have any question before I close the rooms? No, teacher. No? Okay. No. All right, thank you so much for confirming. See you in the main section. Okay, welcome back to the main section. So now to continue um, talking uh, and increasing our vocabulary, uh, we've been practicing ways our, well, that topic was the art of complaining, uh, different ways to say when something uh, makes us feel mad or angry. So we, we don't only have the option to say um, something that makes me feel angry, that is too basic. Uh, so we've been uh, practicing that word irks. Do you remember the meaning? ¿Qué dijimos que significaba? Es como decir algo que me fastidia, algo que nos fastidia, irks. And then annoys, when something annoys us, is it algo molesto, eh, similar a irk, it's fastidioso, irritate. Um, uh, also, when you want to say that um, something makes a situation worse, you, you may use the word aggravate and, and so on. Now, there are some other phrases that can, you can use to express uh, that something makes you um, makes you feel mad or something drives you crazy, etc. And so here we have this uh, exercise. It says that drives me up the wall. What do you think that means?
Well, it's another uh, way to say that something really, really makes you feel crazy, mad, angry. So this is another way to say. It. Um, now, how many combinations of these words do you know? How many can you make? Are the meanings different? So we have the verb, drive, get, and make. And the phrases that we can put together is someone on someone's nerves, someone crazy, someone down, someone mad, someone sick, someone up the wall, someone upset, someone blood boil, under someone's skin. I'll give you time so you can take a look at them and tell me if you know uh, already any combination with those verbs and phrases.
Right, to share how many combinations do you already know? Well, the combinations that I have are <clears throat> drive someone crazy. That's correct, drive someone crazy. And drive someone up the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then get on someone's nerves. Uh huh. Excellent. Get someone mad and uh -huh. get someone upset. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. That is excellent. And Thank you so much. Okay. They are correct. Yes. Anybody else? Nobody? Okay. Get, get someone crazy. Uh, yes, get someone. Um, well, get someone crazy. We can, yes, understand, but it's, it's not like really common. So I'm going to share uh, the combinations here in the meeting chat so that you can copy them in your notebook since we are going to be using them. With get, we have get, well, let me see. I think that we have them in the, in the other material. Let me check. Okay, there you have. Can you see the little white square? There are the combinations. Drive someone crazy. Drive someone mad. Drive someone up the wall. With get. Get on someone there. Get someone down. Get someone mad. Get someone upset. And get under someone's skin with make, make someone crazy, make someone mad, make someone sick, make someone upset, and make someone's blood boil. So you see it's plenty of ways to say that something makes us feel mad. Uh, so you can use these expressions instead of just, an, oh, it makes me mad. It makes me feel mad. I am mad. So you can use also these expressions um, for situations that makes you feel mad. <laughs> so we have uh, this uh, exercise in Part B, how do these things make you feel? Discuss the situations using the expressions in part A. So those expressions that we already discussed here. Um, but before that, let me see, I think I have something here in the PowerPoint for you about the meaning and the uses of this, giving some examples. So for example, it says get on someone's nerve I think that you can see my screen. I I have some of the definitions. It's like uh, get on someone's nerve. The meaning is to annoy someone a lot. It's como que uh, 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 fastidiar demasiado a alguien. So we, here we have some examples. We really got on each other's nerve when we were living together. Another example. Please stop making that noise. It really gets on my nerves. Her laugh was starting to really get on my nerves. The yeah, next expression, to drive someone mad or crazy, it's to make someone extremely annoyed. 
So yes, I think this one is like harder than get on someone's nerve. This is like another uh, up, upper level, drive someone crazy. That is That could be one difference. According to the meaning, it is this upper level. My mother-in-law has been staying with us this past week and she's driving me crazy. Another example, he leaves dirty clothes all over the floor and it's driving me mad. Let's example, my skin was so itchy, it was driving me crazy. Let's see, another definition is of the expression drive someone up the wall is to make someone extremely angry. For example, my flatmate is driving me up the wall. Get someone down. Let's read the meaning of get someone down. If something gets you down, it makes you feel unhappy or depressed. So, um, this is not related to angry. This is kind of different, right? Get someone down. If something gets you down, it makes you feel unhappy or depressed. For example, the chaos in this house was starting to get him down. Next example, I know it's frustrating, but I don't let, let it get you down. Next phrase, get under someone's skin is to annoy someone. For example, Jack really gets under my skin. He never buys anyone a drink. It's a stingy person. Okay. Any questions? Now, to use those expressions, we can go and complete this exercise. I'm sharing the screen. Let's wait a minute so it loads. Okay, now, how do these situations make you feel? People laughing at their own jokes, vending machine that steals your money, Finding empty ice cube trays in the freezer. People eating on public transportation. Airlines not serving food on long flights. We have one example here. The thing that drives me crazy is when people laugh at their own jokes and they are not funny. You can use the previous expressions to um, to share how do you feel about these situations. You can give one or two examples would be okay.
Okay, volunteer. Me teacher. Emerson. Okay, well, you said that you can use uh, two from these sentences. Mm -hmm. So for me, the second one, well, sometimes I get upset when vending machines steal my money. Okay, and, excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the second one, uh, it, it drives me crazy to find empty ice cube trays on the freezer, in the freezer. Yes, especially nowadays with this hot weather. <laughs> yes, oh God. Thank you so much for sharing, Emerson. Another volunteer? Any other volunteer to share what you have been working on? Okay, I will stop sharing for a while and we're going to check attendance. Let's say present when you hear your names. Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Alex Enrique Lemos. Carlos Emilio Coto. Thank you. Decía Noemí Ramos. Elizabeth Stephanie Vázquez. Thank you. Emerson Alexander López. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Gertrudis Aymara Vaquerano. Present teacher. Thank you. Guadalupe Alexandra Calixto. Hazel Vanessa Menjivar. Jose Enrique Pineda. Present. Thank you. Yulisa Yamilet. Carla Ivani Anaya. Luis Javier Castillo. Present, teacher. Present, present. Thank you, Luis. Magdiela Sao García. Present, teacher. Thank you. Manuel Alexander Vázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto Ramirez. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra Martinez. Present. Thank you. Victor Noé Bonilla. Present. Thank you. Vidal Byron Ruiz. Present teacher. Thank you. William Alexander Rosales. Okay, I'll continue sharing. Um, well, this is um, a role play, but um, I'm afraid I'm going to skip this exercise since many people is just um, 
probably listening, not participating, only two or three are participating actively. And yes, for this one, we need a participation of at least a group. So I'm going to skip that one and we're going to continue talking about the causative verbs get and have. As we explained in the previous class on uh, Friday, uh, causative verbs, they are called like that because they cause an, uh, something to happen, okay? Uh, so for now, we're going to focus on get and have. We discussed that there are some other causative verbs, but we're going to be practicing with these two. In this lesson, you will learn how to use get and have in order to give other people responsibility. We have one example here. It's related to the picture that you're seeing there. It says, I had my, bi my bicycle repaired. So in this case, you do not repair your bike. You get someone else to do so. So the, the sentence is, I had my, bi my bicycle repaired. Um, have a causative verb is to talk about things that you will have done or that have been done by someone else. You use this structure. We discussed a little bit about it, but we're going to refresh it. So the structure is subject plus have or had, depending on the tense that we're using or um, when did the action happen. The object and the verb in the past participle. This means that the subject of the sentences didn't do the action that was done but that they are caused the action to happen by, for example, paying for it or asking for it to occur. This is why have is called a causative verb. In these examples, someone other than the subject did the action. A volunteer to read the examples. Okay, mm -hmm. I will continue reading. Sorry? Me, teacher. Okay, Manuel, thank you. Okay, uh, I had my hair washed and trimmed. Trimmed. Uh -huh. Trimmed. Adrian will have his dog vaccinated. Vaccinated. Uh -huh. Vaccinated. Vaccinated. I had my folks paid it yesterday. Molly will have her wedding dress repaired. Excellent. Thank you so much, Manuel. As you can see, uh, it depends, okay? It depends when the action happened, if it's present or past. And also it can be uh, in future tense, only adding the auxiliary will as we have in this sentence. If we need to modify the verb into the present, it would be have... If it is third person, we said that we change it to has. And then, yes, the verb is going, the main verb or the action is going to be in past participle. Had is just function here like an auxiliary, right? This is the causative verb, so it's not the main verb. Uh, we discussed about it the last um, Friday. We also study about get, and we said that the difference is that we get we use the verb, the main verb in infinitive using to and then the verb in the base form. So this is just kind of review. And also we're going to be practicing a little bit more with this exercise. So and next slide says, remember that when you use have plus object plus a verb in past participle construction, you are saying that it was not you who did the action, but someone else. And this is very important because um, I have listened many people saying, I cut my hair last month. You did not cut your hair. Well, uh, some people can do that, <laughs> but most of us, um, 
most of us, we do not cut our hair ourselves. We have someone else. We have a hairdresser or a barber to do that for us. So we do not do that. Uh, and many people, believe me, many people said say things like that. Like, I cut my hair last month. Uh, that is incorrect. So that's why it is important to um, to know uh, what are causative verbs used for it and use them as they are uh, as they are designed to be used, right? To say that someone else does something for us. Um, so that is the main point here. And we have one example here. You see the picture. It's related to the example. I had my flat professionally cleaned because it was too much work for me. I only paid the cleaner a hundred euros. So it was a real bargain. Okay. <laughs> now, I have a scarcity verb when you want to say who did the action. When you want to say who did the action, you can use the following structure. Okay, as you can see in the previous examples, we do not mention who did the action. We are just um, expressing that someone else, we, we had something done by ourselves, something that we did not do, but we do not mention who did it. But yes, if you said, I want to say, or you want to mention who did the action, it is possible. Just following that structure, we use have, plus person who did the action, plus the verb in infinitive form. You see the next examples, using that structure in which we are saying who did the action. I volunteer to read the examples. Me teacher, please. Magdiel. Um, I had. Okay. I had my brother clean my house. <clears throat> I had the veterinarian vaccinate my dog. I will have the electrician fix my lighting. I will have my brother, my mother, repair my toaster. Uh-huh. Okay. What is this teacher? Toaster. It's the same as pants. Pants. As on pantalones. Trousers. Trousers. Hmm? It's more like um, British. Uh-huh. You can, uh, sometimes you will find it in American, but it's most commonly used in British English. Americans, they call them pants, usually. But yes, so you can also call them trousers. Thank you so much for reading, Magdia. Uh, okay, uh, we'll have then. Let's compare. What are we going to compare? Let's see. Compare have plus object plus verb in past participle and have plus person who did the action plus verb and infinitive. Uh, here are some further examples showing the difference between the two uses of have when you want to say that you had something done. Okay. Um, so it is... Uh, la estructura cambia un poco. Si, des, si no mencionamos quién hizo la acción, eh, entonces eh, utilizamos have y el objeto y luego el verbo en pasado participio. Pero si queremos mencionar quién hizo la acción, eh, la estructura cambia. Se usa have la, más la persona que hizo la acción y luego el verbo en infinitivo. ¿Ven? Infinitivo sin el to, ¿ok? El to solo lo usamos con get. Eh, entonces, si vamos a, a mencionar eh, a la persona, recuerden, el verbo va a ir en infinitivo. Pero si lo vamos a mencionar nada más como eh, el objeto y no a la persona, entonces el verbo va a ir en participio. Sí, las dos oraciones ven 
se refieren a lo mismo. Solo que en la primera no menciono quién lo hizo. Solo menciono el, el qué se hizo, el objeto. Eh, por ejemplo, I had, you see, my divorce papers. Ese sería el objeto, los divorce papers. Y tenemos el verbo en pasado participio, sign. I had my divorce papers signed. Eh, ok, digo que eh, ya tengo o, los, o, los papeles del divorcio firmados, pero si quiero decir quién los firmó, entonces la estructura cambia. Ven, I had, y luego la persona quien lo hizo, my lawyer, uh -huh, y el verbo en infinitivo, sign the divorce paper. Ok, so it's going to be different. Va a ser diferente dependiendo de cómo queramos expresarlo. Questions so far? No? Ok, now um, we have next slide. It says more examples of how a causative verb. Pay close attention to the form of the verbs in this. Uh, sentences. First one, I had my headphone fixed. I had my friend fix my headphone. Eh, seguimos con el, el con la con relacionado al anterior, ¿verdad? Si queremos, si no mencionamos quién realizó la acción, sino que solo el objeto del que estamos hablando, eh, vamos a tener la, la estructura. Eh, el sujeto, luego have or had, then la, el objeto y el verbo en participio. Si mencionamos a la persona, bueno, pues lo ponemos después del had y luego el verbo en forma simple o infinitive. So you see here the difference. Eh, otro ejemplo, I had my examination results translated into English. Then I had my teacher translate my examination results into English. Okay, now to practice this, we have this um, exercise. It says use either the have plus object plus past participle or have plus person plus verb in the infinitive to complete the sentences. And you have the clues here so that you can follow them. So we have Sonia, and then we have had or have her clothes, and then the seamstress repair. Then we have Matthew, a had or have his computer, the electrician, clean, cleaned. Uh, Nathan had have his roses, the garden, fern or crunch. It would be great if you use both, both structures with the clues that you have there. Any question?
Okay, volunteers for the first sentence about Sonia and her clothes. Uh, me, teacher. Thank you. Okay, hope oh, this is good. Um, the first one I think is uh, Sonia had her clothes prepared by the seamstress. Yes, you can add by the seamstress. That's correct. Next example about Sonia. Yes, but maybe the the by word it doesn't need to be typed here. I think mm, it's not necessary, but it doesn't hurt. So the the first one could be Sonia had her clothes repaired, and then the next. Uh, the next, um, Matthew had his computer cleaned. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Matthew had his computer cleaned. And mentioning the person? Um, <laughs> I, I had it right the, the same oh. as the first one. Oh, okay. So okay. I, think, I think that's my, that, that's my confusion, my confusion there. Okay, so, okay, for the first one, you could have um, Sonia. Sonia had her, had her clothes re repaired. Uh huh, repaired. That is, um, if we do not mention who, right? This is the structure. We have Sonia and then her, then the object is her clothes, and then the bird in the past participle, repair. And you see, if we want to mention who did the action, is um this would be Sonia had the same stress. Interest in stress repair or close. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So, si mencionamos solo el objeto, sería la primera. Sonia had her clothes repaired. Eh, y el verbo tiene que ir en pasado participio. Ahora, si mencionamos quién y realizó la acción, tiene que ser como la segunda. Sonia had. Luego, quien realizó la acción de simstring, el verbo en, en forma simple, repair her clothes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you try with, uh, let's see, the next one is about Matthew. You can try um, to do the two examples with Matthew. Okay. I can give you time for you to. Uh, organize the two sentences. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm.
Okay, let's see. Matthew. Let's share the sentences about Matthew. Uh, Matthew had the technician clean his computer. Okay. And the, the other one, uh, Matthew had his computer clean. Excellent. Thank you so much. There. Good job. Now, Nathan. Uh, Nathan had his roses pruned. And the other one, Nathan, Nathan had the gardener prune his roses. Excellent. There you go. Thank you so much, Emerson. Good job. All right. Now, based on what we have been learning, we need to fill the gap with the correct information. So the spaces in plan, we have the following words. We have prune, we pay, give, cut, take, and order. Okay, and see, there are seven verbs, so you have to place them here based on what we have learned. You, have, you can use the verbs only once. Let's read, and then you type in the verbs, and we're going to check. So, for example, in the first part, let's do this one. Um, it was a sunny day and George has his daughter, the dog. What is the bird that I have to use here? Burn, weird, pay, give, cut, take, order. Take. Take, uh-huh, or taken. Taken. Mm. I need to. Okay. Josh had his daughter. Taken the dog. Mm. When we mention the person, Veamos aquí cuando mencionamos a la persona, entonces usamos have or had, luego la persona, en este caso es su hija, y el verbo tiene que ir en infinitivo. Infinitivo, ajá. Entonces aquí tendríamos que ponerlo así como está. Take. Mm -hmm. George had his daughter. Take the dog out for a walk. Okay, let's continue. Vamos a hacer la, la siguiente. His joints had become too sore for an early morning walk, but he had the nurse some medication to help with his arthritis. He had the nurse which is the part that I need to use there? We cannot use a take anymore. Order. Order, uh -huh. order. So, tiene que ir igual, verdad, en infinitivo? So he had the nurser ordered. Porque ajá, está mencionando quién hizo la acción, en este caso, la enfermera. Entonces, ahí lo vamos a poner en rojito para distinguir. Ok. So, cuando solo mencionamos el objeto y no quién realizó la acción, recuerden, el verbo va a ir en participio. Pero si mencionamos a la persona que, que, que ejecutó la acción, entonces el verbo va simple. Ya utilizamos take y utilizamos order. Entonces ya no los podemos usar más. Eh, 
y nos quedan cinco espacios para completar. Let's do this and then we're going to check in some minutes. Maybe five minutes or four. Finished? You haven't finished? Yeah, okay, I think that we didn't have enough time to finish this exercise. Now it is time for you to rest. So we're going to continue with this exercise and finish it tomorrow, okay?
So thank you so much for joining, for your participation. I hope that you sleep well and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. I sleep see well. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye-bye. Night.